Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the first video I'm doing for 7 Days to Die Alpha 20, and it's not really a series, it's just... I want to point out the reason why I feel the game has become a little easier now than it ever has been, but it's way more balanced than it ever has been. So I just want to quickly have a look at the settings here. Uh, we're going to continue a game that I've been playing already, it's Test 3. Um, but before we do that, we're going to start a new game, and I'm going to show you why from the beginning. Um, why I feel it's an easier playthrough. So my settings are always this. Uh, warrior difficulty, just because that's the difficulty level that I like. Um, it's two away from max, you know, insane is max, and then it's two above adventure, which is the normal setting. So it's kind of in the middle. I find, I, I don't mind playing on insane, I've played on insane plenty of times before. The only problem is that the, the zombies just become bullet sponges, and, you know, it just takes longer to kill them and you just have to manage the number of them a little better but I don't really feel it all that exciting so I just play on I just play on warrior difficulty because I don't really like super intense playthroughs um, then the basic um, settings the only thing I change is I up the the, uh, the zombies day speed um, normally I play on jog uh, but for this I've been playing on run and then the advanced settings I turn off loot respawn time airdrops I turn off and then blood moon count I cranked up to max to 64 enemies Anyway, so those are my general settings. Let's just quickly jump into a new game. It's the settings are already here, right? Um, this is the pre-generated map I've created already. I've gone through a couple of tests, as you can see. Let's go to number four here. And let's just start the game, and I'll show you why it's a little easier. All right, here we are, just starting up. And it's the same as it always has been, pretty much, when you when you first start up. You've got your starter quests. But generally, you'll start right either right beside or right in a town. I mean, not in the town, but like right next to it, which is kind of nice. Sometimes you're a little farther away, but not much farther. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and quickly just run through some stuff. I'm going to drop those because those we can always rebuild later. I'm going to move my stuff down to where I normally put it like this. All right. So the starting quests are all the same. Nothing has changed since the original game. So you gather your plant fibers and you go ahead and make yourself a bedroll, right? Get that crafting. I'm going to hold off here, picking up anything else until we get this down. Let's put that down. Okay, so now if we're gonna go ahead and scrap this because we don't need it anymore right now. So now you'll notice on the map there's icons to show you where all the resources you need are, right? So this you know says hey you can use this as use these bushes for wood. Whereas before it never told you that. So if you were a new player you had no idea that that would give you wood. And now it's also showing you where the stones are. Like if you didn't know to look for a field of flowers, like I, I don't know how many people know this, but even in the old alphas, if you look for a field of flowers, generally there's like stones in the ground all through it, as you can see here. So finding stone for me was never an issue because once I discovered that it, there's tons of stones where you find flowers, picking up stones off the ground became super easy, right? So let's grab our stones, we got those now. Grab an extra one, make our stone ax. Right, so the quests are, the opening quests are still the same, nothing has changed, right? So now we gotta grab some more plant fibers, so go ahead and do that, right? And we'll go ahead and make our shirt. And like, I'm not a power player by any means. I'm, I'm, like, I don't consider myself a super, like, like, amazing player. I'm just like, because, like, my keyboard is all changed because my hands are fucked up. I don't have, like, good control of my hands, like, as, as I used to when I was younger. Um, so, let's craft our club. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't consider myself, like, a super awesome player. Like, anyway. Uh, let's just get the resources for the next thing that we need, which is a bow. Um, and craft our primitive bow. We just need to find some feathers now, which we should just be able to do. Uh, with the new, I gotta say, first, first and foremost, I guess, um, the new alpha is amazing. Like, don't get me wrong, it's easier, it's more balanced, and it's also very, very amazing. Like, the, the you can see here, if you've been watching my playthroughs before, how much like the the, the uh, graphics have changed and how better it is yeah see even finding birds nests now it's like super easy right we didn't get one at our, at our immediate start location but that's fine you know you just run around for a bit until you see the icon and then you pick it up whereas before you had to constantly search to find them uh, now it's just a little easier so we'll drop this down to here bring this down we'll go ahead and make our stone arrows um, Let's just make one for now. I gotta get some stone here. Uh, so we can get enough for a campfire. Um, oh, did I? Oh, that didn't that didn't count. Because I 
of course, crafted it before, um, what am I missing here? Nothing. I crafted it before I found all my resources, which I, I find annoying, but whatever. Just getting ahead of myself. Um, okay, so gathering wood now is easy. Just do the same thing here. I mean, we can hit up a tree, but just going to grab these for now. Cool. All right. Um, so same thing, build your frame shape. This block is made it er like so much easier to do anything with. Um, when I talk about the game being easier, this is one of those blocks. Um, so if you go to shapes, like honestly, this is like amazing. It's the, what they've done here allows builders to build pretty much anything that they want. They can build any POI in the game, right? So the shapes themselves uh, have made things so much easier. And the fact that you can, um, let's just throw this down real quick. Uh, this is still uh, um, editable and you can pick it up. So you can technically build your whole base out of these blocks and have it like design it to the way you want it to look, right? And then fill it all in afterwards. You don't have to like, um, build those weird shapes in the workbench or build weird sh like sh weird shapes in the concrete mixer anymore. It's just frames like this and then you upgrade it. Now later on in the game uh, with concrete you can build uh, cobblestone and concrete shapes that are just like this that give you all the same um, abilities but once you put those down you can't pick them back up but that's not a big deal. Alright let's just upgrade this. So that makes the game right there is just huge convenience for the player. So much easier. All right, so that's done. Uh, so now the trader is another thing, right? Because you're spawning next to a town and generally in every town there's a trader. Um, let's see if we can get this chicken real quick here. Um, because in every town there's a trader, um, the traders are like pretty close to you, right? So um, you no longer have to go traveling, you know, a kilometer or so to find a trader through wilderness. It's like usually right there, right? So the next thing I want to talk about as we're making our way to Trader is uh, resources and how easy it is to get resources now. So we're going to have a look in some of these bits and pieces of trash here. So, you know, a lot of the time in the early game, like I went through three garbages there, right? We got a, a little bit of resources, you know, a nail, I got some sand, no big deal. Um, a lot of the times in the early game before, I would go through and try and gather resources like that. Oftentimes I wouldn't find really anything in the bags. Like, I mean, you might find duct tape or whatever every once in a while, but for the most part, you would barely find anything. Now you can get general resources like cobblestone, stone, wood, and in half decent stacks too. Some of them are actually pretty good. Like, you know, you can find 40 wood or something like that, right? And then other ones you just, you know, getting stuff. I don't, I don't, I can't remember, but I don't think I've ever had an issue. Yeah, see, we got three things out of that trash. I don't think I've ever had an issue... Uh, with not finding anything in trash, right? Um, I usually always find something in the trash. So the trash will always be useful. It's not like you're going to look in there and go, fuck, there's nothing, right? So there was some wood, some iron. Um, so as I was saying, gathering resources can be pretty simple early on. Um, all you got to do is hit up some trash. And this is generally what I normally do when I'm playing, right? It's like, it's, I'm not doing anything different than what I normally do when I start playing. I hit up trash on the way to the trader. Whatever I can find, I grab. So we're going to have a quick look. I'm going to make my way to the trader. We're going to have a quick look at what I've, I've gathered by the time we get there. All right, so we're encountering our first zombie here. We're just approach, approaching the trader. Just going to hit up this tree stump. I think finding hunting has become more difficult. But um, as of this point, uh, and I've played a couple of playthroughs already, um, I have yet to have an infection early game. I'm not really worried about it. So this guy's on run, you know, and I, I can back up and deal with him. He's not that bad, right? And about, the thing about killing zombies, it's all in the timing, right? Like knowing how many hit points they have, like they've, the zombies are all different speeds now I find. They're not all moving at, like all the, t the same type of zombies always moving at the same type of speed. I've noticed that they're all slightly different and the number of hit points they have is all slightly different. There's no easy way to figure that out anymore. So um, it kind of gives a little bit of randomness to it. Are the zombies harder? No, I don't, I don't find them any harder. They're pretty much the same as they've always been. Um, oh, it's actually fortunate that we started here because this is where my other playthrough started too. So um, we'll be able to see, you know, how I've progressed. 
So once again, the only time, the only thing I've found with these zombies is that they'll sometimes, um, they're a little tricky to, to guess when they're actually going to attack you. Um, sometimes the zombies will, um, have a swing going before you notice the swing. So you'll get an exchange of blows. So you'll take a shot at them and, um, they'll hit you at the same time. I've noticed that happens a lot more frequent, frequently now than it ever used to. Uh, so there's that difference. So that's just one thing you got to remember when you're playing the game. All right, so there's a quick run to the trader. I'm going to have a quick look through here because normally I would search this place when I first got here anyway. So we'll see what we get out of this place. And then I'll show you all the stuff we have. Uh, there's nothing in here until we get to here. All right. So the one thing too is that apparently now um, somebody has pointed out that all of the workbenches in the world are destroyed. I've yet to find anything that's not been destroyed. Well, I got, I've getting, been getting really lucky at this place. Um, I've yet to find anything in the world, like any workbenches in the world that haven't been destroyed. And I'm okay with that. I mean, I don't, that doesn't bother me in any way because it never really affected my playstyle before. I mean, it was always nice to find a, a working workbench or something like that. We got a toilet pistol. I'm going to ignore the toilet pistol because that's a super rare drop. Um, I haven't found one in my uh, other three playthroughs. This is the first time I've actually encountered a toilet pistol. So it's kind of an anomaly and I don't want to include that in this, um, you know, game being slightly easier but more balanced kind of thing. Because um, the toilet pistols are really just that. It's just like you might find one. And if you do, hey, good for you. But if you don't, it's not like you're supposed to find one, right? All right, just finish up clearing, clearing up this place. Man, I've got just come off Darkness Falls and I keep expecting the guard captain to be there and he's just not there. <laughs> All right, uh, let's get over. Oh, we got the workbench still. God, I'm moving dog slow now too. Well, we got a ton of stuff to sell, so we're good. All right, let's have a look at this. All right, we got a couple things here on this side to check. So I've played this game a lot. I'm sure at the beginning of the screen you saw that I've got like 30, over 3,700 hours of playthrough time. So most of the POIs, I kind of have a good idea of what's what, right? Uh, yeah. You enjoy yourself out there, buddy. I'll come out and get you in a second. I gotta go talk to the trader. So they were supposed, like, I mean, they've updated a bunch of the traders. This guy is still pretty much the same. Um, the re revamps that I did a little while ago for Darkness Falls of the traders actually kind of included stuff in here and they've actually done the same thing, which is kind of neat. So, but they should like, uh, okay, let's, let's see this guy's inventory. So let's see what we got here. So we got the hobo stew recipe. Um, I'm going to, once again, I'm treating this as an anomaly because normally I don't find food recipes early in the game. So I'm just going to go, I, I should just trash this and get rid of it. But as you can see here, this is just walking to the trader. Okay. So I found a fair bunch of stuff. Now, um, the traders, I will say everything, the price has gone up. Okay. When you used to get to the trader, the first thing you would look for is to see if he had a gun. Wow, this guy's got nothing. That's amazing. Um, and sometimes you would find like a, a level one um, rifle or a shot, like a double barrel shotgun or a pistol for 800 um, coins, right? 800 dukes. Um, now I, I find that you're not going to see that. Like if you see like a level one or two item, it's going to be like, you know, 1600, 2400 bucks. If you want a half decent one, you're paying five or 10,000 for it. Um, things like workbenches and stuff like that are up around 10,000. The books are have increased in price. I think they were a thousand before. Now they're like 1500. Uh, the schematics are higher in price. We've got a mini bike chassis here. Um, if we wanted to go for that, we could go for that and get that before day three. 5400 really isn't a lot of money. Um, but I'm also noticing too that you're I'm finding more like uh, gun parts earlier in the store which is kind of nice because if you find those early game schematics that allow you to make like an AK or you know a pistol or something like that you can at least uh, buy some of these from the traders which is kind of nice so let's just go through this I'm just going to quickly sell off a bunch of stuff here that we don't need um, what else don't we need I'm, I'm going to be getting rid of that I'm just going to sell like I mean I could use these if I want to but generally I don't find them in my playthroughs so I'm just going to go ahead and ditch those that will end up wearing uh we'll get rid of that we'll get rid of these so um plastic parts if you want money are an awesome way to make a lot of money uh plastic parts drop from a lot of things I generally make like this is only 112 but I make you know hundreds of 
of Dukes every single day just by selling plastic. So it's a great way to just quickly uh, make some uh, some Dukes if you need to. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and sell that. We don't really need it right now. I'm going to sell the anvil as well. Because um, we're not coming back to this playthrough. You can sell cans too if you want. Um, so there we go. We've made 75 or 750 off that run just to get here. Um, so, Safe yeah, I mean, it's not bad. So normally when you get here, um, you talk to the trader and get jobs. You notice here, all these jobs are like within 350 meters roughly. Most of them will be within 500 meters. They're all tier one. Lots of fetch quests, which are really good because these are the ones you should be taking first before anything. Clear zombies aren't bad. Um, I guess the very first quest you should take though, if you can get it, is a uh, fetch and clear because you want to clear a, a house for you to live in on day one so you have some place to stay. Um, but I, I it, it doesn't really matter you, which man. one you take. Okay, um, maybe next time. Because you got to clear a place anyway. Clears generally give you more money than fetches do. Um, so we'll do a clear here really quick. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to just leave some stuff here at the trader that we don't need on us right now. Um, yeah, we don't need those right now. Let's uh, drop... How much room do we got? A fair bit. Uh, drop those guys and that. Right? I guess we'll just keep the rest of this stuff on us. I mean, I guess we could... Uh, all right, let's head out. We're going to go do this job real quick, and then I'm going to jump forward in time. Um, day one's usually pretty simple. Um, yeah. So, it's usually pretty simple. Um, if you don't spend a lot of time worrying about zombies and stuff, I mean, I shouldn't be looting on my way to this place. Now, uh, let's just go ahead and use this. Right, you should always go to the place first, loot, and then on your way back, loot everything between you and the trader. Just so that you're not weighed down when you get there. All right, another guy here. So zombies, if you're early game, if you're using a club and you're facing one zombie, don't waste your time love tapping the guy. That's like left clicking. Um, I mean, I play on warrior difficulty, so maybe it's different on regular difficulty, but um, it's a waste of time love tapping the guy. The only time you should be love tapping the guy is if you're like, you know, finishing him off, or if you have no other way to attack him and you need to delay him from hitting you, that's pretty much your love tap um, time. And by the way, this POI right here is a great starter house. I'm just saying, it's got a weapons bag inside. Um, like, I love this place. It's, it's fantastic. It's got a weapons bag inside in the bathroom uh, and a few other things in here that uh, make it a nice place to stay. It's got plenty of room for expanding. The uh, metal walls now, you don't have to upgrade multiple times in metal then to concrete. Now they just go right to cobblestone. So it's a pretty quick update. Um, but anyway, let's get over here real quick. So let's just talk, before we go in this place, let's just talk about the towns now. I mean, you'll notice, everybody notices Alpha 20. It's just beautiful. Like, they've done an amazing job. We have a quick look at the map here. Amazing job of make these making these towns feel like real towns. Uh, just be because of the sheer number of buildings and how close they are together. They've optimized it so there's like almost no slowdown. I mean, my machine's not super fast by any means. It may probably be a little bit faster than most people's machines. Um, but yeah, so the buildings are far closer together. And then you've got a little, like, interspersed between them. There's things like, let's just go back over here real quick. Or we can find it over here. So you'll find little pa little patches of things like this, right? That just make the town feel lived in. And the patches like this, you know, offer sometimes, you know, some trash and things like that for resources, right? So you can find some stuff here real real quick and easy. Whereas before in the old alpha, um, these didn't exist. So, you know, finding stuff going between houses was rare. Let's just go ahead and scrap those nails. Oh, yeah, before we actually go in here. Um, so one of the new d dynamics they do have are pipe weapons. Pipe machine gun, pipe pistol, pipe rifle, pipe shotgun. And these have all pretty much replaced the blunderbuss. I, remember, I know in earlier alphas, people were rocking like three blunderbuss or whatever. So like if you didn't find the toilet pistol like I found early on, um, people would have multiple um, blunderbusses down here on their toolbar um, just so that they at least had a gun they could use in an oh shit moment. Um, now it's the pipe weapons. So depending on the type of ammo you, you get, you know, so the rifle and the machine gun use 7.62, the pipe pistol uses a 9 mil, the pipe shotgun uses regular shotgun rounds. So the, depending on the kind of um, uh, ammo you find, 
um, you just make the pipe weapon based on that ammo, right? So we're going to go into this place. We're going to do this place, finish it up, and then, um, depending on what we find inside, just make ourselves a, a quick pipe weapon. Hopefully it's a pipe machine gun. Oh, I know this place really well. Okay. Um, compare this. So, uh, they've made double looting in, in these places um, a little less lucrative. It's not as lucrative as it was before. So you'll notice the car here in the um, parking lot. We'll have a quick loot through this. It's got some springs. I'm just going to trash those for now. Let's go ahead and scrap it. Um, and let's actually scrap this. And you'll see why in a minute. I don't really need those. Um, so we're scrapping those. I haven't spent any skill points yet, and you'll see why in a minute. Uh, so anyway, um, yeah, so the, you notice the car there, right? So if we go and reset the quest, this car will still be the same car, right? It just resets the loot in the car. It doesn't reset the car. So before, um, things like cars outside might be a normal car like this, and then when you reset, it would be a scrapped version of the same car. Now that doesn't happen. The same thing happens with vending machines. If the vending machine is working, and um, you go into the POI, uh, and then you and you reset it to do the mission. It would the old version. Sometimes it would it would uh, reset to a, a broken version. Now it just remains the same. So if it's working, it'll stay working. If it's not working, then it won't be working. Now we get a little bit of a terror here. Uh, apparently not because I guess I have to be inside, or maybe they just don't see me. Oh shit! I can't shoot them. That would be stupid. Um, let's make some arrows. Um. The game really is not about... Uh, where are we going here? Let's just make... Uh, I don't like making a lot of stone arrows. Let's just make ten. Come on, you fuckers. How do you not know I'm here? How is that you not know I'm here? Yo! I don't have... I don't even go into the console, so the AI's not turned off. How do you not know I'm here? Normally they're supposed to run down and attack you, but... We want to kill the far guy first. We can. We're not going to kill him with a stone arrow. Oh, for Christ's sake. What are you not, like... How is that not hitting him? Is the AR... Is it busted? Oh, it's not busted. Oops. Now we got to fight the other guy. All right, well. Normally they're supposed to both run at you. Well, we don't have to fight that guy. So dogs are generally particularly nasty. Like even like this is warrior difficulty. Oh, we got a guy coming up here in a second. Um, they're generally particularly nasty, but they're not if you can get a drop on them. Uh, in this particular, are you? What are you doing out there? All right. Well, this is a good time to talk about blocks then. So the fact that they've reduced the oop, upgrade on blocks means that the houses are generally a little sturdier than they were before. So, that used to be 225 health. Now it's 500. Hey! You see what I mean? You can kind of sometimes, like, not... Oh, hey, I'm out of stamina. Hey, what, what? There you go. Um, yeah, so, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the block health. So, now it's 200, or 500 health for, for the uh, blocks to get into the place. Um... So, it's a little more, which means if zombies are on the outside trying to get in, you're a little safer. Let's just go ahead and see if there's anything there. We'll take the plastic, because it's money. So, I know this POI, which doesn't really help, but uh, we'll play it like we don't. Oh no, zombie. Don't waste your time with the love attack. Wait for them to get back up. And they're dead. So the reason why you wait for them to get back up is sometimes, um, and yes, I'm playing this like I always do, these doors always hold zombies behind them, so I always shoot at them. Oh, for fuck's sakes. You can see I'm not that skilled of a player. Anyway, um... Yo, get over here. I got shit to do today. See, when he gets up, sometimes his arm will go in front of his face. What you want to do is, like, avoid, um, when you're taking a swing at them, having the arm in front of their face. I want that. You're gonna... See, the other thing, too, is stealthing is, I, I find... Better than it has been. 
Like, I would never have been able to sneak up on that guy in the past. At least that's how that's what I feel. Um, I, I just... Things just feel easier. You know what I mean? Like, that, I, I should never have been able to sneak up on that guy. But I guess it's, I mean, it's day one. It's a tier one quest. You know, maybe I get it. We still got a zombie back there we got to go get. Okay, this room should be clear. I know I said I was going to play. Oh, that doesn't have it. It's this corner. Um... Oh, that guy heard me. So the only the only problem with their walls having so many hit points is if you need to get the hell out of here fast, it's going to be hard to do that because um, the walls have so many hit points. If, if you don't have a good tool to get out, um, you're going to have a hard time. Man, why am I finding so many cooking pots? Like all my other playthroughs, I don't, I've like maybe it's one of the updates could be. Maybe the they people were complaining they couldn't find cooking pots in, uh, under sinks and stuff. Now they put it back in or something, I don't know. Alright, so quick loot of the kitchen gave us a few things, not much. Let's go ahead and scrap this. We don't need that. Ah, a couple things that we can sell. I mean, I could drop this, but whatever. I always grab these for the leather. I need 10 by the end of today, should be no problem. Alright, now in here. So, I mean, most of the time, you can just, like... And this isn't an easy thing, this is just a knowledge thing for me, like... Because I've played the game so much, you kind of know... Oh, at a certain point... Oh, I'm gonna have to go fight this guy. Come on, bring it out here. You kind of know, um... After a while where the zombies are gonna be. Eh, did I, can I get any arrows here? I guess not. We got one zombie left, so let's just go smoke this one. Yo! Let's go, buddy. Shit to do. Wow, well, that was lucky. I was out of stamina, too. Should have been, should have been more careful there. Alright, we're just going to do a, a quick finish looting this place. We'll see what we get. We'll make our way back to the trader. Have you given me a way out yet? Oh, never mind. So, this is the other thing that's made the game easier. There's these key racks that open the doors. Which I think is brilliant. Don't get me wrong. I think it's a brilliant move. Because it always used to be a pain to break out of here, and now that the blocks are so much higher in hit points, um, this just makes way more sense. Now that the door will open. Right? And now I can get the frig out of here. Right after we loot whatever's out here. So let's just grab this. So as I was saying before, the loot is... Go ahead and scrap you. We'll repair you. Put that back down there. Oh, yeah, okay. So the loot is generally a little better because you're finding more stuff. Whoa! Eh. Hey, I'm talking here. Skater guy I don't like because he has a little bit more hit points than the rest. We're just going to get some stamina back and wait for this guy to stand up. Come here, you. Nope. Oh, still going. There you go. Finishing love tap. All right. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, yeah, loot and stuff. Uh, you generally find more just general loot everywhere like everywhere and I have like if you look at the distance I've traveled so far I've gone to the trader right I've gone what 400 meters to that house and now I'm going 400 meters back my inventories I, I got so much shit like it like it's just the, the amount of stuff now that you get is way over what you what you used to be able to find I don't find that you need this much stuff too. Like, so I mean, you can dial down your loot rewards if you want to make the loot even scarcer. Um, if you want, sometimes you got to worry about a dog in this place, but I didn't see one when we were going by, so I think we're fine. Let's just grab these for the iron. I'm going to go in here. I think we can get enough leather out of this place. There should be two zombies in here. Come on, somebody wake up. There you go. I'm still in your leather. Get out here. Hey, lady. Oh, that's got to hurt, eh? Oh. Yeah, they still don't really see the stairs that well. Like, these stairs here. Come on, buddy. You're pissed. Ow! Yeah, see? I lingered and he hit me. You gonna jump that or are you just gonna, like... There you go. 
There you go. Oh. Love tap. See how much of a waste of time the love taps are? It's like, just power attack and finish them. But there's no point. Oh, there's a bird on top. Well, shit, didn't know that. That's nice to know. Ooh, duster. He's not breaking in anytime soon. That zombie's gonna take a while to get here. Oh, wrench. Uh, I So yeah, the one thing is I rarely find a wrench on day one. I'm just kind of shocked I found one here, but we'll keep it. Yeah, we'll take those. We can scrap this. All right, we can scrap some of this stuff. And then we'll just deposit some of this stuff in the sink. Yeah, they've also made it easier now too because I don't need a repair kit to uh, repair scrap boots. I just need iron. So if you're using scrap or cloth armor, it's just repaired by using iron or, or cloth. So that's pretty easy. Um, let's just leave those. We'll make one of each gun, I think. I think we've got enough material for that. All right, here we are, back to the trader. How's it going, buddy? We'll take your ammo. So this is another thing. Of, I mean, I know they had this in the last Alpha 2, but the amount of ammo that you can get or pipe bombs or whatever off of these guys is, like, ridiculous now. Um, let's see your inventory. So do you have leather? You don't. So we're not getting a forge on day one because I can't find... Oh, I can find leather on the way back, probably. So let's just sell them some stuff here. 53 of those equals 169. So there we are. One day, one mission. 2400 so the fact that the prices in the store are higher is really irrelevant. I haven't done anything at all really today other than pull off one mission and grab some stuff. So when people say to me, the game's harder, I'm like, how is it harder? How? How is it harder? Zombies might be a bit more unpredictable. I mean, if anything, it's the same roughly, but you know, there's just more loot to be had in here. Three, four, five. Thank you. Bye. Oh, yeah. The other thing about this is water. Water's everywhere now. So it's not like you're going to be go like doing without water. Like, I have no food right now, but I didn't spend any time hunting down animals because I was just showing you the rest of this stuff. But there's chickens and, and rabbits everywhere. So you don't really have to, like, go searching too much for food. So usually at the end of the day one, I've got about five skill points, and here we go. The reason why I don't spend them when I start and it's, this is just me, it's personal preference, is I don't need to, like, there is was no need for it when I was playing. I want to see what I need when I get back to my house. Now, generally, if like, I found the schematic for the forge, so I could have used that and saved the skill point. Um, but generally, I, I, I generally never find a forge schematic. Um, so we'll go ahead and take that. Um, and that's why I'm never worried about, like, cooking pots. So once you get your forge... Right, on day one. It's really the only thing that I want on day one. Um, you go ahead and you throw that down. And then you can make yourself a cooking pot. You can make yourself iron arrows. So I've got 7.62. I've got some shotgun rounds. i got some um, 9 mil. So my recommendations for weapons early in the game. The pipe machine gun is ridiculously OP. Um, so now I've got a pipe pistol and a, and a pipe machine gun. And, it, and at this point, you've seen me fighting the zombies already on warrior difficulty until this point. With no gun. I had a club and a bow that I barely even used. And now I've got these. So that's day one. And that's why I feel this alpha is so much easier. Like, I mean, I got, what, two sewing kits back at the other place. Tons of brass. I've got cement clay. I didn't get any cobble today, but normally I, I, will get, I would pick up some cobble. We've made 2,400 2, dukes already with only doing one mission. I've got two weapons, two automatic weapons, right? Granted, this one's only got 15 rounds and this is a six shooter, but I have automatic weapons already in the game, right? To handle like more than one zombie. And with the quest rewards that you get from the trader, I'm most likely to pick up Molotovs and pipe bombs. Um, so handling groups of zombies will no longer be an issue. Um, so yeah, there it is. Like day one, I've spent one skill point. I've got, I'm up to iron arrows already. I've got my cooking pot. I've got my place to live, right? I've got a pistol and a machine gun. I'm on warrior difficulty with zombies on run. And that's my average play suit. So this is why I think the game has just become easier, right? 
it's balanced, don't get me wrong. I find the game is balanced because like I said, you need to gather more to be able to sell more at the trader in order to buy better gear at the trader. So that's balanced, you find more time gathering. But you'd be like, for instance, with the sand and you know, I found buckshot and cement, you find, you know, you'll be doing less time um, gathering your resources overall before day seven if you want to like upgrade your base or whatever you spend less time get going out and and knocking stone down knocking trees down um you don't do you do a lot less of that and a lot more looting and and having more fun right anyway let's move forward in time i, I think i'm on day 22 of my other playthrough so we're going to skip skip forward to that and see how i'm doing there all right so i'm not as far along in this playthrough as i thought it was i thought it was on day 22 but I, maybe i was thinking when i logged out it was time was 22 hours anyways it's day 16 and I just moved my house because I, I went to a bigger city, right? So I'm just going to quickly show you what, what's that. So the settings that I did for this random gener generated world, the only thing I changed was I put many cities rather than just normal. Um, because I like the fact that there's like lots of places you can go and explore, right? Um, so we got a couple of big towns next to each other here. Uh, and what I was looking for in this playthrough um, was I was looking for a specific thing where I want to build my horde base and I'll that I'll probably record at some point once my horde base is built but there's an intersection right here that was perfect for how I want to build my horde base so once I found that in this town I decided to move here I am in a building right next to the trader and fortunately I was able to find that building that's built on that underground bunker so the walls and everything below here are concrete and metal all of the items that I have in my toolbar with the exception of my tools I just made level 3 iron tools um, I found these, I have not made one Molotov. These all came from traders or finding them. Pipe bombs, I have made a few pipe bombs because I've been using them a fair bit. Uh, so I did make a few. I think I made like 12 or 13 of them at one point, but most of these I got from Crest Rewards. Uh, the ammo's all been found or from Crest Rewards. I have yet to make a single piece of ammo. You can see all the uh, casings and tips that I got here because and buckshot that I've been saving, thinking that I was going to need to make ammo. But... I don't need to make ammo. <laughs> I've been using all my gunpowder on making pipe bombs. Like, I, I, I just haven't had any need to make any. So, I don't understand why people are saying the, the game is harder when I'm not using any ammo. It's well balanced, don't get me wrong. Like, but it's not a harder game by any means. Um, it just isn't. I, I, and I, like I said, maybe it's because I've spent 3,700 hours in the game. So I have a good idea of how everything works. Right, I know how I know some of the houses. I've got a lot of experience in the game, so doing certain things is relatively easier already. Oh, hey, buddy, what's up? I have something for you. What you don't want that? He didn't like that. He's going to sleep, so he's going to just stay there for now. We'll leave him outside. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I guess if I, I mean, I'm going to have to start playing. I guess with the loot turned down. And zombie feral sense turned on um, during the day, and maybe uh, maybe at night. Maybe we leave it on at night too. I don't know. I just I don't like having zombies banging on my friggin' door. So you're constantly fighting zombies all night. Like a lot of this game for me is building and exploration. So I mean, I could play that I'm constantly fighting zombies, but it just gets boring after a while if you're just constantly killing zombies. It's once again, it's your play style. So I'm just I can only go based on how I play. I'm not saying that everyone plays the same way. Anyway, here's my food situation. I heard that food is far more difficult and medical supplies are far more difficult and harder to come by. You tell me on day 16 if that's a difficult, like, I don't understand. These eggs, uh, most of them I just buy at the trader. Potatoes, I bought at the trader. Corn, I got a little bit on in, like, in the uh, so, uh, farms around me, but most of this I got at the trader. I got this at the trader. I found these. Water I made on my own. I'm saving that for later. These I found. Uh, the yucca juice smoothie, I found both of these. I, I don't understand where the difficulty is. And maybe, like I said, maybe it's just because I've been playing the game for so long. I got tons of meat too. Like I'm not, I, It's not like I'm going to run out of bacon and eggs anytime soon. The mechanics of the game have made things a lot easier for people to do what they want to do. Which is why I feel the game is more balanced because you're no longer a slave to those parts of the game that you don't like. Like if you don't like gathering resources, hell, you don't have to. Like I haven't, I, I, I did it at the beginning of the game, I gathered a bit of stone, but I get all my resources from pallets now. The new alpha is amazing. It's super balanced. It's super easy, especially for new players. If you're a new player, 
um, you're really going to enjoy the game. It's a lot more intuitive. It makes things a little simpler for you. Um, it's easier to gather resources, um, which means you're you're spending more time actually playing the game than you are um, doing those tedious tasks. And I think that's working as intended. I think the fun pimps meant for that to happen. They meant for you to spend less time in your day gathering resources and more time in your day enjoying the game and having fun and exploring, going into buildings and stuff, you know, and then trying to balance it a little earlier on to keep those players safe with the uh, the pipe machine gun and the uh, the pipe pistol and stuff. Sorry, the one last thing I will say though is I have been in the wasteland, not with this particular playthrough, in another playthrough I spawned in a town that was right next to the wasteland. So before day seven, I decided to take a bike ride through uh, the wasteland just to see what it was like. And I went in there with a, um, just a club. I just rode my bike through, I didn't want to stop. So a wasteland playthrough would be really, really cool. You would probably have to do it on normal settings to start just so you can get used to the wasteland. But there's cops everywhere. There's zombie bears everywhere, uh, military zombies. This is all before day seven. Um, spider zombies were everywhere. The vultures are insane, so I would have to pedal for a bit till I was past where like the all the cops and the dogs and everywhere. There's no zombies around. Then I would jump off my bike, kill the vultures, you know, get back on my bike, wait for a bit for my stamina to go back up and ride off again. Yeah, the wasteland is going to be brutal. Um, which I think will be an offer of fun play. But if you're just a new player, you could spend your first, you know, 30 days or 40 days if you want in the green biome and not have to worry about the other biomes. And yeah, your loot's going to be better in those other places because your loot, go loot stage goes up. Anyway, I'm going to leave this here. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff I missed or didn't touch on. If you can think of anything, throw it in the comment section but down below. And once again, this is not meant out of like... Uh, malice for people who are complaining about how difficult it is. It's just a my personal perspective. This is just how I see it now. And once again, like, I, like I've played a lot of hours in this game. I got a lot of experience. I played Darkness Falls for the longest time. So maybe just coming back to this, it just seems too easy. I don't know. But as far as I can tell, I've been pretty fair on the judgment of the new game mechanics. The zombies are still the zombies. The AI is a little better. Um, not much better. The fact that the zombies can crawl now too, which is kind of cool. If they get knocked down, they might crawl. Like so, if they like if you've got a block up here, they might crawl through a one block gap, which is kind of cool. And I hear spider zombies will jump through a one block gap. I'd like to see that tested with like a plate put down up up on the top to see if the plate actually stops them from crawling through, or if a zombie is considered a half like a spider zombie might be considered a half block high. Uh, in which case, if you put a plate, it might still be able to crawl through. But if you put a half block here, it won't be able to. I don't know. That's one of the things you'd have to test. But, you know, if, you, if you've if you got a base that relies on an open space like that, then you just have to rethink it, you know. Rather than using melee, you just use your weapons and put, a bar, put bars in there and not have to worry about a zombie getting through. Anyway, leaving this here. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you know, please feel free to comment. I'm really interested in what people have to say about the alpha. Um, I just want to know how people feel about it. Um, I, I don't... Anyway, I still don't see it being harder, but I'm willing to listen to other arguments. Anyway, till next time, we'll see you later.